Welcome back, everyone. Let's go ahead and get Anaconda Python. I'm going to close this notepad. I don't really need it. Uh, I'm going to use Google Chrome primarily for uh, this tutorial series. I'm not a, you know, a fan of Google, uh, and they don't pay me anything for doing this. They do have a good uh, you know, troubleshooting tool built into the browser, which might come in handy, that, and that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to just type in Anaconda Python. And I'm going to go to the uh, Anaconda distribution right here. It says download Anaconda. I'm going to visit that. So you can see it's anaconda.com. And you have the option for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm going to click download. Right now it detected that I'm coming from a Windows machine. You can do the same thing for your Mac one. Notice it actually has Python 3.9 built in. What Anaconda is is a collection of tools along with Python itself. So I'm going to wait for this to finish downloading, and then we will proceed with installing it. OK, so our download is completed. I could go to show this in the folder, if that's something that I like to do, and that's where it is. And I can double click it from right here or from right there to actually install it. I will close my browser and continue with this installation. Let's click Next. I agree. I'm going to install this for all users, and I'm going to click Next and say Yes. Notice where it tries to put it. It's going to go under Program Data Anaconda 3 folder, and that's where it's going to basically dump everything. And that's perfectly fine, as long as you know where it is. Do you want to register Anaconda as a system Python 3.9? Yes, I would like to do that. I'm going to click Install. Okay, so eventually we get to this screen right here. I'm going to click Next and click Next here. I have a couple of options here. Thank you for installing. Here are some helpful hints, Anaconda distribution tutorial and getting started with Anaconda. I am going to uncheck both of those and click Finish. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Start, go to Anaconda, and I'm going to right-click the Anaconda Navigator and choose to uh, uh, pin it to the taskbar so it's convenient. And I'm going to start it. Go ahead and close this window right here, too. It starts a command prompt and then it's going to start your default browser. I've already made Chrome my default browser in Windows, so it should start Chrome once we actually start our notebook. Right now, it's bringing up the Anaconda environment. And I will let this run and you watch as uh, you see it come up. First time, especially, can take a little bit longer than usual. Okay, so it does say that uh, there is a, a newer version of Navigator. We strongly recommend you update. Whether you want to do it or not is entirely up to you. Uh, I'm not going to update right now. I can say no, remind me later. And I'm going to click this to resize the environment right here. So as you can see, you have a lot of applications available to you. The one that we're going to be focusing on will be the Jupyter Notebook, which is right here. So I'm going to click Launch. And this is going to open up the browser, the default browser, and uh, allow us to write our code. These browsers are referred to our little notebooks. So as you can see, this is pointing to my default directory for my user. And I can see my desktop, documents, etc. And uh, I'm going to go to desktop right here. You can see there's nothing on my desktop currently. I could go ahead and create a new Python notebook. I can create a new folder. I'm going to create a new folder, and it's called Untitled. You notice that showed up right here. And I could go ahead and, for instance, go over here and delete it if I wanted to, uh, or rename it, or move it, etc. I'm going to click Rename, 
and I'm going to change this to Python. So I'm going to dump everything inside of this Python folder. This little IPYNB uh, that shows up, that's short for IPython Notebook because Jupyter used to be called IPython. Uh, leave it alone, it's something that Anaconda uses. I'm going to click in here because I want to go inside of that. And then I want to create a brand new Python 3 Notebook. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger so that uh, it's more clear. Um, allow me to do that. Okay, that's about 125%. Yeah, let's see, 150% should be plenty big for everyone. And I want to show you first how to get around this environment a little bit so you get used to the idea. These little cells is where we actually type in our code. So I can type a very simple print statement with single quotes that says coffee time. Then if I press the enter key, it goes to the next line where I can add another print statement and say tea time. If I hold the shift key and press enter, the code executes and a new cell is given to me. You can always go back to the previous cell and make changes and um, do shift enter again. So if I change this to cocoa time and do shift enter, I get cocoa time and coffee time. Once you are in a particular uh, environment, you can press the L key on your keyboard to actually show line numbers. You can also press the L key again to hide the line numbers. I also want you to understand that this is, of course, for saving, as you might expect. You do have your you know, cut, copy, and paste features that are available to you. Occasionally, when you write in code, either accidentally or however, uh, you might uh, you know, change this to markdown or, you know, raw NB, uh, convert or heading and things like that. And maybe wondering what's going on. Well, that's because this has changed. You want to go back to code here and I better delete that sharp symbol right there. So if that ever happens, just look uh, that you've, you've accidentally done what you, you know, set, set, set to a different mode, basically. Instead of doing shift enter, of course, you can click run. You can press the uh, stop here to stop. This is for restarting the kernel. As you can see right now, it says Py Python 3 IPY kernel. This empty circle means that nothing's happening right now. It's idle. When it's solid, it means that something is going on. You also have a lot of things you can do with the cells themselves. You can go to cells right here, run all cells above, below, just all the cells. You can go and insert cells if you want to. So I can click, uh, you know, insert and insert cells above this one uh, or insert cells below this one. So you can certainly do all of that. Uh, also notice that my book, uh, notebook right now is referred to as I entitled. I'm going to call this coffee and click. Actually, let me go ahead and call it 001 coffee and click rename. And in my Python notebook now, I do have uh, 001coffee.ipynb, as you can see. Occasionally, your kernel gets stuck. So if I write, you know, uh, create a variable a is equal to 9 and uh, b is equal to uh, 10 and write a silly loop like while a is less than b, print uh, a and b. This is what happens. This becomes an infinite loop, and you can see that the kernel is basically stuck at this point. It says kernel is busy. So what you can do, you can go back under kernel, you can interrupt it, you can restart it, you can restart and run all, reconnect, shut down everything over here. In this case, I just want to interrupt it. So I'm going to click interrupt, and it's now free to go. And I could go back and if this is bothering me, I could certainly go back over here and cut the cell entirely and just be done with it. So that was a little bit of getting around in uh, Anaconda uh, Jupyter Notebook right here. We're going to be using these notebooks to create all of our code, but I wanted you to feel comfortable with the environment first and foremost. Thank you for being a great audience. If you enjoy these videos, please share them with loved ones and uh, friends. And don't forget to also share your own knowledge uh, on the web. 
if you have any particular requests moving forward, uh, you want to see something, you know, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to accommodate any requests that uh, you might have.